you feel like very claustrophobic in your own body. Um, it's, like you just want to jump out of your own skin and it's just a really scary thing. I mean, people sometimes describe it like a flu that doesn't go away, but I would say it's much worse and much more surreal. Do you wonder what disease she's talking about here? Lyme disease. It's a hidden illness, poorly researched, without a vaccine for humans, only for dogs, and a tremendous capacity to devastate people's lives. Lyme disease, you know, it's, it's a spirochete. It comes from a tick bite and it has many co-infections. I had several of them, including Bartonella and Babesia, which actually is a parasite. Iranian-American novelist Porochi Stakakpur has been living with a chronic Lyme disease for almost two decades. And after publishing her best-selling memoir, Sick, became an advocate for Lyme patients in the US and abroad. 14% of the world's population has Lyme disease and records from health insurance in the U.S. estimate that each year, more than 470,000 Americans are diagnosed and treated for Lyme disease. It used to be that it was just out in, in rural areas or areas with high grass, and now people are getting them right in the middle of urban metropolises. Now, for instance, New Yorkers can get it in Central Park, which raises the next scary question, how do you even know if you've contracted Lyme? So I never saw the bullseye. I, I don't even know if I only got infected once or more because I was in very high Lyme areas for many years teaching. It's common knowledge that doctors look for clues such as a bullseye-shaped rash and flu-like symptoms like headache, fatigue, and fever. Doctors would also check if patients were recently exposed to infected tick areas like forests or urban parks with exuberant vegetation. Again, if you catch it within um, a, a period of time, it's acute Lyme and it's pretty treatable with antibiotics, then most Lyme patients, if their Lyme disease is not caught in acute stage, can easily become a chronic Lyme patient or sometimes what we call uh, late stage Lyme. Lyme disease was reported for the first time in 1975 to a group of people affected by what was supposed to be an uncommon type of arthritis. They lived in Lyme, Connecticut, a vastly wooded area. Climate change is not helping. Mild winters and long hot springs and summers are increasing the reproduction of ticks. The black-legged tick, which carries Lyme disease, used to inhabit the northeast of the US. But new reports indicate it has moved to the Midwest and Eastern Canada. People who develop long-lasting Lyme might experience harsh relapses. In Porochista's case, they happen around every six years, sending her for months to bed. It's really hard to accept that that's like from like one tick bite or maybe two tick bites or something in your life that just having that one little tiny thing that's like the size of a speck of a pepper, you know, that thing can not only cost you your, your you know, your well-being, but also like it's very, very expensive. In all these years with my Lyme disease, um, I've spent, um, my, my closest tally has been about a quarter of a million. A quarter of a million dollars that I certainly didn't have all at once, but this is all from all those years, you know, here and there, the last 17 years. Um, any money I've had goes to my health. So how can we protect ourselves from getting Lyme disease when we go outdoors? The main way is by using tick repellent. Wearing long sleeve shirts and closed shoes can also significantly reduce the chance of being bitten by a tick. It's usually light colors is best because you can see the ticks most easily. You can actually send the tick to a lab so they can be tested for Lyme. With the symptoms and the cost, can you still manage to control this disease somehow and have a happy life? I really was hesitant to open myself up to any sort of like dating or romantic life um, when I was really ill. I basically didn't date anyone for four years and then I had my partner, uh, which, which I, who I found during the pandemic um, online. And I sort of had to tell him, I'm like, because the thing about me now is if you Google me, Lyme disease is like the first thing that comes up. So with this partner, I kind of was like, do you know that I'm like chronically ill and, and partially disabled or I go in and out of disability? And he just wasn't really afraid of it. I mean, he, he hadn't had any experience with it. And it's just, it was really, really wonderful. And I had a really great community of writers, especially here in New York. They really were there for me.